Welcome everybody. We are doing a little review, tips and tricks, mm, I guess, about Play the Quest, a great grand strategy game that came out last year. Um, although it did ha it did get a DLC, I think this year. So um, it's a lot of replayability now, etc. Uh, let's just jump right in. All right. So first of all. You got all you need, you got a new game, you can load your old games, achievements will just take you to the Steam achievements, credits will play at the end of a scenario, you can also see it here. The timeline is interesting. Uh, this is me playing the Arslan scenario 1, beginning of the Game of Princes. The scenario is called Game of Princes, and these are the different things that happen, and I, I finished in... Uh, 1182 it's 1182 um, you can probably do it faster I'm just a very defensive player um, and we'll talk about the political situation once we get in, in there encyclopedia there is one uh, it's decent I haven't felt the need of to use it much options are pretty basic can change your language if you want to. Uh, this is a Korean game, or there's a there. The studio that makes it is Korean, so that's why we will see some weird translation uh, mistakes in the game. Unfortunately, this the story is very good, but the translations break my immersion. Uh, sadly so uh, you know it happens it comes and goes I'm not sure if there's a pattern to it I kind of feels like they might have had different people translating different parts and if that's the case then I can see why some parts have more errors than others um, from what I've seen from other let's plays this first scenario uh, with uh, Arslan here in the scenario mode chapter one uh, there there's quite a bit of uh, mistakes in the translation early on we are asked the chapter two with the princess maker has fewer of them at least that's my impression the impression I got um, also I from watching other uh, people play it seemed like these two scenarios were locked so you had to play this one to start with but when you first start up your game you can play the first three chapters I think from whenever they just want you to start with the first one they will like ask you like are you sure you don't want to play the basically the tutorial it, it, it's very much like a tutorial but as I finish this, the chapter 4 mission or scenario unlocked as well. Um, I'm just going to go through it. So I'm going to make a playthrough on chapter 2 or the, the second scenario. And uh, I'm going to show you how the first chapter looks like after we have looked at my save file. Where, I've ended, where I ended off. So 89 turns in. And each turn is one month. There's 12 turns and 12 months in a year. And uh, yeah, so this is a little bit of background. Background: We play as the Sultan of Rum. Uh, our father is still the Sultan. We are just mm, like doing our best and uh, helping him out. And as it is a tutorial scenario, we have fewer options to start with and then they unlock um, oh, uh, through throughout as the scenario progresses. So like the Sultan grants us more and more powers, which is a very smart way of uh, easing the player into the game. Anyway, so in order to win, you, you have to conquer all of Anatolia which is this part here, as you can see in the region map, Anatolia is right here. Um, so, I mean, I, I just 
took a bit extra land. I didn't have to. I was declared upon by the the what are they called again? The Knights Hospitalier? Or just the Knights? They're gone now. But yeah. Um, this is just the political landscape that ended off. And I only had to fight the Byzantines for two bits of land uh, at the end. And honestly, you can play this without even having to fight the Byzantines if you are in a way aggressive enough and in a way patient enough and uh, i'll come to that when we look at the scenario uh, map as you start out this is just uh, how it all ended up uh, this blinking thing here means that this guy who comes around once a year uh will let you well he 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 offers you the chance to build a road See, we can bid, bid it between the Assassin's HQ, which is right here, and Adana, and Brasov, and Arad, which is over here. I have no interest in connecting those two, of course. It seems like only the player gets to do these decisions, which is a bit unfortunate, I suppose. Um, so, for example, the business teams start off with this area in their control so i would have loved to have a road connection between ankara and nico D, nico nico media here because the thing is when you go to war and you do it by choosing commands here then you pick a place and then you can only attack with the roads so like i could attack here if i if someone else owned this or here i can attack this way because i don't own this but yeah, you can only attack through through the routes, the land routes or sea routes. And the sea routes you can only attack through if you go into your research here, to your uh, research tree, and unlock Pioneering Sea Route. This will allow you to attack and conquer over sea routes. You're now able to attack by sea routes. Two other things that I want to mention can be unlocked here and uh this is gated in the in the first scenario because they only want you to play so far so you can only unlock up to here for the first stage or whatever there are the the, the research tree is much larger um which i guess i will look through it look at in the uh, next playthrough but anyway i want to show off the aut automatized mosque this will unlock the mosque bot as well as the automa automatized policing which only unlocks the policing bots the these two are in my opinion the least useful bits of unlocks that you can make that you can pick and as you can see they don't branch off anywhere else they're just dead end unlocks what they do is they give you these two guys, the mosque bot and policing bot, and they don't give you an extra action. And uh, I'm not gonna go through how you play this game. You'll have to look elsewhere to do that. Uh, but each of these generals can do one action per turn. Uh, so in the if you go if you want to go into the mosque and do something, that's one action. That's one general's action spent. So if you just use the mosque bot here, what he does is he will place someone, he picks the one who's best ad ad um, adapted to using the mosque in there. So Atisha here has uh, uh, traits that makes him better at donating at the mosque, as well as he gets more research points because he gets an extra book when you catalog books here. So you can see there are five books here, but if I click this guy, I will add an extra book. That's that symbol that comes up there. That's his trait. Anyway, so he gets six books that he can categorize. Um, so I think that's what it means. If I just use him to rest... Uh, okay, so uh, what I meant is the mosque bot will pick the best one of your generals, it seems like. If I just rest with this guy, so I spent his turn. The mosque bot will use, yeah, someone else. 
Um, and he will he will do either of these actions. I'm not sure if actually let's uh, let's just cut about log some books here. I I don't care about what happens. Let's just okay. This is how it looks like when you oh when I get to the red one, uh, you'll see what happens when you pair them together. You unlock some research points. And the more you do, the more points you get. So I got 19 there. 19 is bad. It, it's really bad. If you use the mouse spot, you get 40 research points. But you don't get any more, you don't get any less. As far as I've seen anyway. So I've used up that um, cataloging. So nobody else can catalog the books. They can't do any more research. So he wants to use Dukak to make Shisha. And he expects to produce five, so let's just do that. Let's see. Yeah, we get we got five. So the expected the expected production is, I guess, guaranteed, perhaps. So instead of playing a mini game here by flipping coins, uh, we just got whatever that is. I I, I should have looked at it before. I'm I'm not sure how how good that was. Um, so we got these five, these last fives. I'm guessing he upgraded maybe two or three of these. As you can see, he didn't upgrade this one. This the It will always be at least the one grade or one star Shisha, which is uh, tobacco or similar. But maybe some of these started as uh, number twos. You can't start as... Uh, three star grade uh, tobacco though um, so I'm not too sure about that uh, but yeah basically all it does is it, it, it just picks for you it just does does it it gives you some sort of average outcome for you um, so I don't like using the mosque bot I think it's a waste of research points unless you're either late game like this and you have way too many research research points uh, obviously because I can't spend them in anywhere else so um, in the first scenario you you want to get the research points you you really need and then you really don't have to spend much actions getting more research points just to unlock things because you will just get more and more research points as you conquer and um, as you fulfill different um, missions, uh, I'm not sure what they're called. Uh, when you get into Parliament, you get sort of missions that you pick. Either way. Then we have the pol policing bot. It will just pick someone who's good at policing. And I know for a fact that uh, Kilij... Arslan the second is better at policing this one uh, city descent decreases more by policing so I'm not sure why he doesn't pick him maybe it's because uh, since there's only two descent here as you can see here uh, it might be the case that uh, it will get rid of both of these at once I'll just use the bot and we'll see. Um, this guy will get rid of two guaranteed. I'm not sure if this guy, uh, Alasis, will get rid of both. I'll just do these and see, shall we? Um, mm, apparently. Oh, so I can keep placing with a policing bot until... Well, I... I could probably place all three of these guys there, even though I don't need to. Anyway, let's just end the turn here. The game might end here, so I I didn't think of that. Um, oh, and let's just fast forward here. If you just hold down control... Oh, I'm still at war with... Yeah, sorry. Uh, it just ended here. Let's just uh, go quick through these. The, this was my my fault. Ah, uh, can I? 
There we go. Controls, control clicking. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Victorious. Very nice picture. And then we get to the credits. Okay, but so anyway. The point I was making is that I, I don't like the bots. Uh, you know, so the only two cons I have with this game is uh, those research. Um. Those two points of research I do not like. And uh, the uh, translation errors. It's kind of annoying. As you will see. We'll just start this again. Uh, so at the beginning of each round you get a you get like an update on what's what's happening this month. So every three every three months you get resources and uh, sometimes special things happen. So once a year aid or if you're Christian there's Easter uh, happens. You can scroll through here to see what's about to come and plan out what you want to do uh, and this will tell you like your rank, how many generals you can have, what other people think about you, if you have any allies etc. Uh, your generals will be listed here and behind them all the troops that you have so when you have several generals and tons of people it will look pretty pretty grandiose. Well, let's just skim through this. All right so you start off, off in this way um, the first thing you need to do is you want to you need to get rid of this rabble right here they have two infantry one is not even fully at full health um, I I think I failed my first attempt at attacking them with with uh, with two units don't remember why but don't don't underestimate them too much just um, be aware make make a save file or whatever save your game before you do yep so this is political situation you have all the kingdoms here all over the place the key hungarus and kingdom of hungary will be at each other's throat and down here we have the crusaders the christians the anti-frank alliance the Saudi brother nations so these guys are obviously uh, muslim uh, and then these guys, the Fatimids, are Shia Muslims. They're, they're not part of our group, they're just Muslim, but they're Shia. Uh, so they don't show up in the same religious uh, window as us. And then of course you have the Kingdom of Armenia, Byzantine, um, our Orthodox, just like these two. And then you have the Catholics down here, as I said, these are Shia. And yours are um, the first issue you're gonna have is with the Dani, Dani Simen's dynasty. I looked this up, it's supposed to be Danish men, or Danish men's dynasty. Uh, you don't get anything if you look for Dani Sumen's dynasty. Um, I think that's a translation error, which is pretty grave since it's you know it's staring you at your face, and in any game, the these guys are there, it it, it will be there. So that's an annoyance. Uh, let's see, but yeah, so these are your first enemies, and. In this scenario, whenever I got attacked, I never got attacked. Like, nobody ever issued an order to attack me. They were just defending. I waited like three or four turns and nothing happened until I attacked. Um, other people will attack other nations though. So I suppose that's something. Um, Unfortunately, I decided to ally the Byzantines because obviously I don't want them fighting me. But that just meant that when I wanted to take over this bit of land here so that I could uh, neighbor the Kievan Rus and trade with them, because you can only trade with whoever neighbors you or is a neighbor to you. And um, so unfortunately, you don't start off with the diplomacy screen here, so I can't really go into that and show you but as you can see I bordered the Byzantines here and here so I can trade with them I bordered the Armenians here so I can trade with them and I border the Danishmans here so I can trade with them I cannot trade with the Knights or 
the the kingdom of Cyprus because I do not have a road connection with them and I don't even know if you can build a, a seaport route like I don't think so I think you can only build co land connections um, with a guy that comes around once a year um, so yeah you have to expand to neighbor some people at least with, with you know uh, in this scenario if you want to trade with with other people you you can only trade with these three to start off with and you need to expand so what I should what I recommend you not not doing is not allying the Byzantines so that you can expand into this land and neighbor the Kievan Rus so you get them as a nice ally to trade with and uh, yeah and then later on there's an event that makes all the Anatolian parts or at least I, I assume that all of the Anatolia, all of the cities or forts in the Anatolia region that the Byzantines control, they will break apart. This is a spoiler. I should have mentioned that. It's a spoiler. Um, but yeah, if you wait for that, you can attack and conquer these parts without actually attacking the Byzantines. They do get a decent army, so... You, I, I would say that's the easiest way to do it. Just attack these guys, wait for that to happen, and you'll have this part of the Anatolian area. And then you only need to take out the Kingdom of Armenia. And then you can probably do it much faster than the eight years that I did. Yeah, it might take you like five years. I think in like four years or so, this part will split off. Let me go into the save file once, one more time. So yeah, as you can see here, I got six generals. And that's because as a Lord of the Grasslands, Prince of Rising Power, I'm not sure which one of these, but either way, yeah, as a Prince of Rising Power, I can hire six generals. So that's me and five others. Uh, here's a summary. Many kingdoms fear me because I'm big. I'm allied with two nations. I'm trading with four nations. I'm at war with the Byzantines. I have a general that can be targeted for a pagan hunt. That means that he's not of my religion. That's this guy, Tancred. He's a Roman Catholic believer, but he's native to Anatolia. Sometimes the... Uh, culture of a person matters and other times the religion matters so for example Tancred here he is not Sunni so he cannot pray to get a new candle and candles will basically boost what you can do here so I can do two two extra books if I go here I can do two extra boxes of uh, Shisha and I can flip two more coins, as you can see over here is the bonus prey plus two, otherwise it's just the one coin. And uh, you can you can donate money and uh, collect prizes as many times as you wish. So when you are as big as me and have nothing to do, you, you send people into the mosque to uh, donate and get rid of some fun, <laughs> rid of some money to, to get other stuff. Uh, the letters are useless. Um, they don't get you anything other than maybe, you know, a laugh. That's, that's the best they can do. So right now they're offering three letters, which is pretty bad. Like there, it's a, there's a big chance that you might not got anything at all. And that little box right there in the bottom left times three, there's a question mark that will grant you units. So unless you want units, uh, you don't necessarily want to go for it. And what you do, what they give you is they will give you these units for free. Otherwise you go here and you purchase them. So this, this unit costs 672. 
Yeah, every every type costs 72. Yeah, so basically it's 72 times 3. So 1, 216, is it? It will save you like 200. Um, but I mean, they're only useful if, if you have room for more units or if you're uh, upgrading units. Uh, speaking of, if you want to upgrade units, they have to be veterans. Uh, and then you can tier upgrade, and when you get to uh, this tier, which is the second tier, and want to upgrade to the third tier, you need uh, at least one of the same type of units in reserves. Um, and so the barracks is your personal s list of units that you're using, and reserves are the kingdom's units that you can that you can get so all of these are well unused or uh, not used at the moment at least units I even got me a temple knight however as you can see in red at the bottom there this troop only a base general believing in Catholic faith um, so this guy can only be used by tank red uh, no, that's the wrong one. Barracks. So, if I wanted him... I would use him with Tancred. However, generals can't use four tier troops and higher if they aren't their main class. Which means that... They are basically gating higher tier troops... Uh, to be used in... With, with generals that have the corresponding uh, class. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means in the future, um, but obviously it will mean that the, the best archer classes, when you develop further up in the research tree, because as you can see here, I've unlocked tier 3 troops here. I haven't even unlocked tier 4 because I can't. They are basically... Hmm, you have to get tier 4 troops in this scenario, either through Darkshine, which will take a troop and, uh, and make an, a special troop, like all of these troops are specials, like you, you can't get them other, in any other way. Or he can convert a troop into something else. Ooh, I wonder what happens with this troop, I haven't done this one. Um, so yeah. It will take it. It will still be the same class, so it will still be cavalry. Uh, this guy is already irregular, but interestingly, I can still recondition him. I can't recondition this guy because he is not reconditioned. Oh, yeah. Okay, so regular and irregular troops can be reconditioned. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, can't wait to try, try that out. But yeah, so reconditioned troops are specialized troops that are better. Um, because I have to... Let's see. You have to unlock in the research tree a method of tearing up. Like here, you must complete tier 4 troops research in order to tear them up. Um, and I can't tear this guy up because he's in my barracks. I would have to, first of all, dissolve him, put him into the reserves. Uh, well, let's just do that. Let's see, it's this guy, right? Yeah. I dissolve him, which just means that he goes in here. And then I would tear him up in here because, as you can see, there... It used to be three lines of red text, but now it's just two, because in the barracks or uh, in the reserves here, you can you can train and upgrade, do whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's all good. Um, but anyway, I still need to unlock that tier four troops research, and I still need that extra copy of the same unit in order to do this 
Uh, so when you are capped like I am right now, uh, reconditioning troops by using the black market here um, is the way to go. At least that's how I feel. Also, you need the money, of course, because it all costs money. If on the other hand, you want to buy some troops, you need to have pagan... What are they called? Okay, this guy costs 30, 10, 10. Pagan prisoners, exactly. And uh, otherwise you just sell pagan prisoners off, or you go into relig your religion screen and you offer them to get a boost to your religious um, standing. So no, you, you get a big boost from it though, but it always becomes more and more expensive, so you can't just count on that being your being up high for a, lo a long time. Um, okay, I feel like I'm rambling here. I'm not sure. I, I've made my points. I like the game. Um, every general is an action. Generals do cost a lot of money, though. Right now, I'm spending 71 coins on money. I'm in the red. I've been in the red for a long time here. Um, but I'm keeping above it because I... I'm, I'm trading with people, so I get, well, basically free stuff. Because you don't really pay to have trading companions. Um, oh yeah, I was going to talk about the diplomacy screen. So yeah, when you're allied with people, as long as you're above whatever the... It's usually about three. Uh, three what? I don't know. Three influence. Then you can start trading... And then it will it will tell you what you get out of the trade. So these guys, I don't trade with them. I would get 60 wheat and 5 sugar. And I would get it every... Th is it every 3 months, I think? I don't trade with these guys anymore, sorry. Uh, I think every 3 months, yeah. Um, which is uh, it's pretty good. Trading is a pretty good thing. And also, you, you don't necessarily want to dominate the whole map in this game, because you get more and more siphoned uh, amounts, so you lose money through corruption. So this is my capital. Every place that's next to it are, has, has no, no corruption, but if I go one step a, a further away, so the first step, second step, uh, you get a 20% increase in city, city siphoning or corruption. So this is one, two, three away. That's 40%. One, two, three, four. That's 60%. And then it seems to stop at 60%. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Still at 60%. But still, it means that you're losing a lot of money. Um which I suppose you can make up for by controlling the places that uh, that make a resource. So this guy makes sweets. If they don't have any resource, let's see. So first of all, I'm getting 15 from this little village, which has a resource. I'm getting 60 out of this village that doesn't have a resource. But obviously, I'm not getting 60. I'm getting 20? 25% maybe? of this city's resource, because I get 60 minus 60%. So, in a way, it's better to aim for the places with uh, resources when you expand beyond, well, yeah, further from your city. Um, I also saw these guys, the Fatimids dynasty, changed their capital to this place when they lost Damietta. I don't know how they did that, because when I took over Famagusta from the Kingdom of Cyprus, um, I, did, I didn't do anything with the rest of their cities, but I just killed off their whole country. So it, if, your con if your capital gets conquered, you might get a game over right there. Um, I'm not sure. It, because obviously it looks like you can change your capital, but I don't know how. 
there is to my knowledge uh, no way of doing that where's the encyclopedia here let's see can i search for this no i can't kingdom city fort road leasing angry nope mm, territory and capital let's see capital there's a city in every ca kingdom which is the center of politics culture administration there can only be one such place in the entire kingdom which is the capital at the capital there's a star that never goes down and the kingdom's flag stand proudly on land stands proudly on land places that are connected to capital by ro roads counts as a kingdom's territory when the city's connection to a capital is cut off the city will no longer be under the influence of a kingdom of the kingdom and be it will become an ownerless city yeah, it will become neutral. Anyone can just pick it up without declaring war on it because it doesn't belong to anyone. The kingdom falls down if you lose the capital. Yeah, that's what happened with, with Cyprus. Protected at all costs. So, yeah. I have no idea why they were allowed to change their capital. It's very strange. Maybe they changed it before they lost this place. I don't know. This little icon here indicates neighbors uh, so as you can see there is no such icon here with either of these guys nor with these with the this guy i am now neighboring R the king kievan rus here so i can trade with the those guys the mongols and the assassins uh, cannot be traded with because they are outlaws they can just be at war with you or be friends with you. And I don't really know what being friends with them m means other than when you get into parliament, uh, the par parliament will ask you to either destroy them or befriend them. But the tutorial said that tr trying to destroy them just makes them come back stronger. So I guess you shouldn't try to destroy them. Um, oh, I didn't think of this before, but it shows you how many generals they have. That's nice. And I'm, I suppose this is the ruler right here. And then when there's more than four, the ruler is in the middle. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's about it. I'm not... Yeah. I didn't mean to explain how to play the game or how the game is played. I just wanted to point out some tips and tricks... Um, to start you off. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.